Hi everyone, it's me, KP, and I'm here in my studio, The Moon and the Maker, headquarters of Rubber Moon Art Stamp Company, and we are live here for Watercolor World Watercolor Month, day number, oh gosh, what number are we on? I'm losing track of time, 12 or 13. I know it's written up here somewhere, but I literally am sort of um, lost. Oh, we're on day 13, because I just looked back and... This was yesterday's, which was day 12. I've been trying to be really good about writing the date or at least what number it is on the back. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. So it's just a couple more minutes until 11. I am going to just continue to make sure I'm all ready here with my fresh water, my paper towels, and all my, all my supplies handy. Um just so I don't have to fumble around when we get started. I want to say good morning. Kathy is here. Welcome. It's good to see you. I know that um, today's Saturday and right today is Saturday. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh my goodness. Um, it doesn't feel like a weekend for some reason because today um, is like a pretty busy work day, but also um, my son is coming home after being gone for almost three weeks to Florida. So I'm super excited to pick him up this evening. And um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started in just a second. It is still only 10.59. I want to say good morning to Elizabeth and Becky and Kathy so far. As many of you know, um, I've been trying my best to not uh, get too distracted. I've been not really saying a lot of welcomes just because I want to keep this um, short and sweet for everyone and uh, not get too sidetracked. And then I've been trying at the end to still hang around, although I forget sometimes I won't lie. I get excited and I say my goodbyes and then <laughs> I leave before I can see if there's any questions. But I'll try to be better um, about, you know, pausing at the end saying hello to you all and seeing if there are any questions I can answer for you. Um, just in case some of you have not been here for previous days, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're using. We are using 300 pound watercolor paper. So it's a nice, heavy, heavy watercolor paper. I am using cold press, which um, has a little bit of tooth to it. I'm using fluid brand, which looks like this. This is the fluid brand. I also have other packaging. This would be hot packaging here. You can see it says hot press finish here. This one says cold press. I am using cold press, but I am using 300 pound, not 140 pound. Okay. So it's um, fluid is a nice um, price point. I feel like it's not necessarily the best, best paper um, on the market. Um, but it's good and I like it and I use it quite often. So <clears throat> um, I hope that you will like it as well, but everybody will have their preference on what weight they want to use and also what kind of finish they like. There's other finishes, you know, such as rough press, which is extra toothy and textury. So maybe you like that. There is um, other ones like soft press, which I won't lie, I've never used, but you can just experiment and play to see what you like. Um, I do recommend though that, you know, just like with any art materials, if you can afford to buy nicer quality stuff, you will be more excited with the results. Um, often I will practice on cheaper paper um, or I definitely have used less expensive pigments. And I will tell you, it's sort of like walking or running, jogging, with ankle weights on. When you take them off, it feels so good and you feel like you're so much more accomplished. <laughs> so it's kind of the same with your materials. If you use materials that maybe are not the best quality or, and it doesn't always mean that you have to spend the most amount of money. Although usually I won't lie, that is sort of what it means because <laughs> you do get what you pay for, but it doesn't mean you can't find bargains and things like that. So, um, same, so paper, you know, you want to use the best that you can or find what you like working the best. So that all being said, I'm using a little bit different of a color palette today. I'm experimenting a little bit more and trying to break brights, um, which are have, you know, mostly been my go-to. <clears throat> 
Um, so I pulled out a few other colors here and kind of created my own palette. I also did something kind of fun. I wanted something a little smaller and more manageable. So I got this old, um, I have been vegan now for three years, so I don't eat eggs anymore. <laughs> so now I have this egg tray um, or uh, deviled egg platter, and I'm going to use it. It's a little bit smaller and more manageable than my other large palette. So um, it's nice. It's heavy. It's glass. So I can put my colors in and mix them. So here I have um, pyro red medium. I have indigo. I have green gold and olive green. And this one I don't need. I don't know why that's in there. And then I have Payne's gray. And those are the colors that I'm going to be using in today's little splashing your stamps lesson. Okay. And then we just have two stamps. I'll keep this kind of handy so you can at least see when I make up my wash. <clears throat> Excuse me. Two stamps. I have this vase or vase stamp. <laughs> I don't, I can't remember the name of course, but it is KP7199G. And I'm really sorry. I don't have anybody here with me this morning to do any moderating or help me post links or anything. So, um, so I'll have to do that at the end or maybe Mr. Moon will be back or Maxie Moon might jump on later and help me out. I don't know. <clears throat> but for now, they're, they're not here. So, and I'm sorry about the way my stamp looks. This is one of our indexing stamps, which um, we just use scrap wood and um, we write stuff on the side. So that's what I'm using for my, my vase. <laughs> and then um, I don't really say it like that. I really just say vase. But, um, and then I'm using a stamp. This is um, a little grouping of flowers. I'd say, well, I'm not sorry, but this is just sometimes happens. This was a moon mail stamp, um, I believe. Uh, and so it's not available necessarily to the public unless you are in the moon mail group, but definitely know that you can substitute anything or you don't even have to use a stamp. You can just fill in your flowers if you want to. But we're going to splash our stamps again. And um, this is the sample piece. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, I'm just using my long round brushes. I have a number four and a number eight. They're pretty much what I use all the time. Although I'm, st I'm um, <clears throat> looking forward to experimenting with some new brushes. Um, and I will tell you more about all that soon. But I'm hoping um, that I will get a little bit better myself about choosing the correct brushes for the job because um, I think I've been sort of a lazy painter. I found a brush or a couple of brushes that I love and I mostly do everything with those. Um, I have a feeling sometimes though I wouldn't struggle as much sometimes if I would pick the appropriate brush for the job. So um, that being said, I'm excited to share with you that I'm going to be a silver brush educator soon. We're going to go through some training in August and I will have more makey stuff to report back to you after that. But in the meantime, I'm just using my two old trusty brushes and that's the number four and the number eight long round. <clears throat> Boy, that was wordy. <laughs> well, also when I lied, because I'm also going to be using my flat shader, which you've seen me do almost every day. Um, whenever we splash our stamps. So I'm using that one again. I'm going to go into my indigo right here. I'm going to turn this so you can see it a little bit better. I'm just, I'm not wetting it very much. I have fresh paint in my palette, so it's already really moist. So I'm just going to drag that across the stamp at just the right amount. And it's not too wet because I did get a beautiful stamping on this one. But the only thing is I do want to go down just a little bit. I don't want it up so high. Ooh, pretty good one. And then <clears throat> I'm actually going to take another color um, and use it to stamp my um, flowers. And I, I forgot to squeeze it out, but I will show it to you. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of... Titan buff. I just need to find it. So I'm sorry about that. Of course, here I was trying to be so organized and I still forgot something, but that's just me. <laughs> huh. It's so every time that you all come back and watch, I just feel like Sally Field <laughs> going, they like me. They really like me because I just feel sometimes I'm just so forgetful and goofy, but you know, 
we get real around here. All right, so again, I know you can't see this. I'm going to turn this. I do like having this here just so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to dip into that Titan buff and just make myself a nice sort of even mixture, nothing too watery, and drag it across the stamp. Um, and the reason I am using this color is just because I want the little smushy watercolor outlines, um, but I don't want anything too heavy or dark um, because I want to be able to paint over. You've seen me do that with um, like the light pink color and so on and so forth. And the nice thing is too, is that it doesn't have to be um, stamped very well. Like I don't have to mask off or anything. It fits right in there so nicely. And um, now we'll just go to town. <clears throat> I felt like when I looked at all of the sand or all of the other pieces that I've done so far, the other 12 pieces, I was like, well, we could really use like a little still life and definitely something floral to round out sort of the other 12 pieces that I've done. Now that I'm starting to look at it as a full body of work, and I hope that you're playing along too and painting and getting lucky because you will see that just from these, what, half hour, 20 minutes a day, um, that you can really create a large body of work, um, especially if you create some unity within your pieces by using similar color palettes or using the same size paper. By the time our month is done, you will have a great little collection of art. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm letting this sort of dry up in here and I'm gonna go in and just with a little bit of water, I'm gonna begin to, like I do sometimes, fill this in a little bit. And if I keep it deeper, more value to the edges, to the outside edges, it will look more dimensional. So I'm just gonna let it be a little darker on the sides and then I'll let it lighten up as it gets to the center. And then I'm even will go back in with a little stronger indigo. I'm using my indigo and that's what I stamped the vase in. And I'm gonna go right up to the line and really, really deepen my, my outside lines, my outside edges. <clears throat> and then, you know, I'll, I'll, con I'll just, I'll continue to sort of manipulate that uh, later in the painting. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go, and this is, I do want you to kind of see this. I'm using this um, pyrrole red medium, and um, I'm going to really create a wash. Do you see I'm just really watering it down? So I'm just getting sort of the lightest tint of that color, and I'll go in and just start putting down a little bit here and there. Kind of working quickly, build, you can build up your layers sort of fast just by smush, smush, smushing. And I want to go in a little darker, a little heavier, and just totally sort of obliterate this flower. Not obliterate it, but really paint right over my outlines because, again, that outline is done in that Titan buff color, so it's real light, easy to cover. And if you don't cover it, if it gets mixed, then it's okay too, because it'll usually create sort of a good little wash color. I'm gonna do the same thing to this flower. Again, not really trying to paint them in as much as use them, again, as a base layer, base layer or guide.
again, when you want more of a pale tint of that color, then you just water it way down. Remember, even just the slightest, slightest tint to the water will still give you a bit of like a stain on the paper, you know, a bit of a wash. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of my greens. I'm going to, well, actually, no, I think I'm going to do a little bit of um, this. Uh, I know you can't see it on here, but this is um, my, my uh, Payne's Gray. And again, I'm going to just wash it out really a lot and make almost, again, like a little stain. And a lot of times if I want to test it, I'll just test it right on my blotter paper. That's why I like to keep paper down under me while I'm painting so I can sort of blot off. And then I'm just going to go in and I'll put a little of that gray undertone, a little bit of like shading, if you will. Um, but it's so subtle. You don't really start to see it until it becomes more of the whole, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so now I'm going in with a little bit of my olive green. And I'm just going to, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to switch brushes, not try to struggle with that larger brush so much. So I'm going down to my number four. And again, just giving a little bit of the olive green wash. And this is where you can sort of play and have fun, sort of just going over some of those lines if you want to. Now again, sort of just with little mark making, but again, using some of the little detail as your guide. And that's one really fun thing about doing organic shapes and florals and things like that is there's really no wrong or right. You can easily put down little bits of color and totally make it your own. <clears throat> Now we need a little green gold. The green gold is really nice because it's sort of a yellowy green. So it really will sort of brighten things up and you can lay it right over some of the greens that you did, or you can just plop in some more little bits of business here and there. And don't be afraid to go back in and, you know, deepen the color just a little bit because as it dries, it will get a little bit lighter. So you might want to go back in and sneak in some more values there. The next thing, um, it's starting to come together pretty well already, but I want to go ahead and lay in my little foreground, little tabletop, whatever. I, again, am just going to mush up this uh, Pyrrole red medium, but I'm going to add a tiniest bit of indigo to it. Just sort of make a mauve color out of it. And just a nice quick wash. Oh, I'm actually, I'm going to sneak over here. I have just the tiniest bit of this uh, pyrrole orange right here, that, that dark spot of orange, because I just, I decided I want just a teeniest pop of orange, maybe here and there, just 
just a small bit. It's not going to make that much of a difference, but just for a little different of a shade, I guess you could say. And, you know, I've talked about this before, but even just some of the smallest little tiniest bits of business, little things that maybe don't show up that much, but they can just make such a big difference in the overall outcome. So don't be afraid to spend a little extra time just maybe adding just a smallest swish of color here and there. And then I'm going in again, a little indigo on the very tip of my brush, hoping that some of this is dry enough to add just the little few touches of deeper value on some of my flowers. Not a big, big deal, but. And I'm going to take a little bit more green gold. I feel like this could have been actually on my sample one, could have been filled out just a little bit better. And I thought, oh, I'll just do it from on camera. So I'm just going to smush again. I know that's not very technical, but I'm just going in with a few little blobbies of really light wash of green and let it sort of help me fill in or round it out, I guess you could say. And you can see I'm sort of <clears throat> doing a few little wet on wet techniques, letting some of the other colors sort of just fill in and play in some of those puddles. I hope you can see that, okay? And then, let's see. Well, of course it's gonna look a little bit different than the original cut, or you know, than my sample because no two will be exactly alike, but as I'm way that this flower really sort of has that background where the open petals, um, the background sort of does the work for me. And I want that to be extended out just a little bit, I think. And remember, of course, any of these little things, tips, techniques, little pieces that we're making and creating, if you feel the work larger, <clears throat> then of course, you can easily translate this to a bigger piece. So finally, I'm going to go ahead. This should be pretty... Um, set now. I do want another, a little bit more of a wash down the center. I feel like that was a little too stark. So in order to make this part look lighter, then I need to darken my edges even more. The more I bring this up or bring, deepen these outer edges, the lighter the center will look.
And then finally to sort of bring it together, I just took my, my smaller brush again, a little bit of the green gold. And I just gave myself, I guess, a little, let me go this way, maybe a little watercolor stripies to make wallpaper. I don't know if it's wallpaper, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then finally, maybe a little drop shadow in the front if you feel so jiggy. And voila, you have a little still life. Whoops, I'm... I'm looking in the monitor now. That looks a little dark on this side. So if you want to not make it look like it just has a stripe down the side, you can keep playing and manipulating that. I think the main thing is, is to just work sort of loosely and not let it get too overworked, which is a lot of times my concern um, and I just get crazy with the watercolors. Anyway, so that's our splashing our stamps for today. I'm looking at the monitor trying to get it lined up, try to do that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you get to get your stuff out and get Makey too, because no fun just getting Makey alone. <laughs> well, sometimes it is. All right, so I'm going to um, go back and look at look at the comments and see if anyone has any questions or thoughts. Um, I want to again, as always, thank you for being here and joining me. Um, as you know, I give these lessons freely and so willingly and gladly. Um, I do have a place on my website. If you would like to leave a small donation, it helps me to continue to create content for free and is always much appreciated. But if not, that is perfectly okay too. Just loving it, being here and sharing it means a lot to me. And um, let's see, what else do we have to talk about? Um, I hope that y'all got a chance to see that I'm going to be at the Queen's Inc. and also Golden's Hill Paper Crafts in November. So if you're close to the area, I hope you'll come get Makey with me in November. Um, and I think that's about it. <laughs> if you have any other questions, let me know. So I wanted to say hi to Dana and Julia and Tracy and Linda. Two Lindas. I got both Lindas here. Yay. And um, Jan. So we... We're pretty quick today, all in under 20 minutes, right? Yay! Linda's already signed up at Golden Tail. I didn't realize that she had it up already. So I need, is it on our website, Linda? I, I didn't talk to her, so I didn't realize that she was already taking sign up. So I'm really excited. Oh, so, oh, you were talking, you were guys, were, I'm just seeing all the comments now and you're talking about the deviled egg plate. Yeah, isn't it great? So I would definitely, if you have one that's plain, I like this one, it's glass, but if I had a white ceramic one, that would even be better. Because, you know, I have that really big uh, white porcelain palette that I got for Christmas a couple years ago and I love it. It's really special to me, but it's also really big and really heavy. So I... I'm going to keep it, but I'm putting it on another table. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are the best. I Kathy too? Woohoo! I'm so excited now. Um, anyway, so I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I hope that you get to go and play and make some art because that is what makes our soul happy, right? I will see you tomorrow for day number 14. I'll be here um, at the same time. I do want to let you know about Monday. Monday, I'm going to be out of town. So I'm going to pre-record the lesson. It'll still be up at 11. Um, 
but I'll have a lot to talk about hopefully after Monday. So thanks so much again. I'm going to tell you one more time to have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye. Peace out. <laughs>